Welcome back to Chevy is Cooking. Today we'll do the viral spaghetti squash. Alright, before we get to this business, I need y'all to subscribe and like this video. Give me a comment below if you want to see this particular recipe. So I've been making spaghetti squash for quite some time. And I can tell you the biggest issue is cutting this thing. So first trick, put holes in it, microwave it for five minutes. It will soften it so where you can cut it. The next trick is you see me, I'm going to pound the knife into it to get a good, clean, straight line started. Now, I'm not going to plate mine inside the bowl, but you really want your line to be straight if you are going to do that. Now, once you get a nice line going, you're going to cut around the circumference of the spaghetti squash. Make sure you have a stable board that's not going to move on you. I've been doing this a while um, and it might look a little haphazard because it's in. Sped it up a little bit so it's not taking this long, but you get the point. Be safe um, and microwave it a little bit more if you need to. Use the hard edge of your spoon to scrape out the inside. You want to get all those little guts out. They have a weird texture if you cook them. And even though they look stringy, they won't have the same stringy consistency of the flesh of the squash once it's cooked. So get all that trash out of there. Next, you want to coat with your oil of your choice. And then you're going to season it salt and pepper, or you can use a combination seasoning. I chose to use Kinder's uh, Steakhouse Butter. Then you're going to flip it upside down because you want it to kind of steam when it cooks. Put it in the oven of 400 or so for 45 minutes or until it's soft. You see how it looks. When you get those little brown spots, you know you're probably close. And then if you test it with a fork, it should be fork tender and easily uh, flake off and become like your little noodles. If you don't get this action, you need to cook it a little longer. Now, some people may um, just kind of scrape off the sides and keep the squash inside of its its shell and then put this sauce and toppings inside of it. I don't do it that way. Even if I do choose to serve it in the squash shell, what I do is I scrape it all out. Um, that way I can incorporate my sauce in the pan with it and then put it back in. I think it tastes better that way, but you don't have to do it that way. You it's, It might be easier for you just to add sauce to it. That's up to you total your personal preference but I like to take mine out and you'll see me do that mix it in the pan now it's time to move on to my proteins protein of choice today is going to be salmon and shrimp you can season it however you choose I suggest if you're doing seafood um, you can do a little Old Bay Cajun or whatever I like to use um, Mrs. Dash, it's very flavorful and I like to control my salt by adding my own salt. I'm also going to use some spice mode, just give it a little flair, um, give it a little spice, nothing crazy, but really this is the world is yours. Whatever your favorite seasonings are, you can use them. You could also add a little jerk if you wanted to. Um, you know, you can build the flavor how you want to, but of course feel free to emulate what I'm doing. The foundation of this should be salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic. Um, you can remove the salt and then sub in some Tony's, some Old Bay, or whatever. Just make sure you're mindful of your salt. If that's a concern of yours, you can always add more salt, but you cannot take it away. You'll also notice when I cook salmon, I tend to only use salt and pepper on the skin side because anything else usually burns and it's a waste of seasoning. That's my personal preference. If you want to do both sides, that's up to you. Now I'm going to put some avocado oil and some ghee. You don't know what ghee is, it's clarified butter. And basically it has a higher burn point so you can pan sear with it and it won't burn up and have your alarm going off. So that's what you see me doing. Um, now I'm going to add some bell pepper to mine. I prefer red, yellow, orange. Green's okay, but it's not my type of swag. So I'm going with some um, red and orange somewhere in between there with that. And it's gonna give my dish a nice brightness and sweetness. I'm also using the shallot. If you don't have shallots, use onion. Again, this is all about personal preference and I 
promise you I use whatever's in my refrigerator at the time. I was lucky enough to have shallots, a little bit more delicate of a flavor. Um, so it goes well with seafood, but onion would also work well here too. Now, a note, don't overcook your shrimp. When it curls into a sea, it's done. It's still gonna have residual heat and it's gonna cook. Another tip with salmon, don't touch it and you'll get a nice brown sear. Last final tip, always incorporate homemade wine. We might make some wine in another episode. We'll see how things go. But anyway, take my salmon off when it's done. And I'm just gonna add my aromatics. Aromatics are your peppers and onions. I always start with my peppers and onions first. Always put your garlic in after it because garlic burns very quickly. Um, so you need to make sure you move it and you have some moisture. I like to use the frozen cubes because it's fresh like garlic, um, like fresh garlic. I do not use garlic, the, the garlic in the jar it doesn't taste the same. Um, but also you got a little buffer with the frozen garlic um, as it melts. It, so it's easier and more forgiving if you're a new cook. I put some rosé in here. I just had some in the refrigerator. You can use any white wine or you can omit it. Um, and you can just pick up and use more chicken broth. Um, but that wine is great to use because it gives you acidity. Now I'm using a spreadable cheese. This is another brand similar to Boysen. I know Boysen is really popular, but this is another brand and I really like this brand. But if you don't want to use either one of these, you can absolutely use cream cheese. But if you use cream cheese, you're going to have to do more seasoning because this comes season, it allows me to use less. So if you use cream cheese, just step up on your seasoning and add a little bit more. Now right here, you can add milk of your choice, milk, heavy whipping cream, half and half. Um, again, the richer the dish, the thicker your sauce. So if you put in heavy whipping cream, you're going to have a thicker, more luscious sauce. But if you want to pull back, use less of it. And you can even skip it and just use the cream base or the cream cheese or the spreadable cheese and some chicken broth, especially if you're trying to reduce your calories. That's a good way to do it. Or you just prefer a lighter sauce you can also make that choice as well so now i'm just going to add my chicken broth and i'm going to make it a little more watery than i want it because as it cooks down um, and some of that water evaporates off of it it's going to thicken up so i go slightly above where i want to be as far as my consistency and it it'll thicken up now i'm being generous with the dash but please remember mrs dash does not have salt in it so it might look crazy it's really not but if you don't like your food that season by all means keep it bland and plain it's your food eat it how you want to but just remember i'm using salt-free seasons and lastly i put my lemon in here's a little tip put your lemon juice in when you're making something like this to add that brightness and freshness and acidity do it at the end Lemon's very volatile. Um, if you cook it to death, you'll kind of lose the lemon taste. You'll wonder where it went. You'll have some of the bite, but you won't really have the lemon. You can also add the zest if you want more of a stronger lemon taste. And I'm from Maryland, so you know, we're gonna have to put a little Old Bay anytime seafood's in the pan. That's just law. So this is super easy, very customizable. You can play with the sauce to your liking. And like I said, I'm not serving in a shell and I always put my squash back in the sauce for a couple of minutes. Let the squash absorb. It's great at absorbing flavors. It's going to really take up your dish and not to allow it to go into that pan and soak up all, those, all that sauce and goodness. Um, so it's really not anything to cook, but just absorbing the flavors. Now, I know you hear that. That's how it is supposed to sound. I ain't going to say what it is, but you know, if you know, you know. So here we have it. Spaghetti squash, super simple. Once we have that thing, you see how it all sucked that great sauce up? Delicious. Now you can put it on your plate and put your beautifully cooked protein on top. And look at that. We have dinner and 30 minutes working time, took a little bit longer in the oven, 
when we out of here. Come back and holler at me.